that <laughs> she was probably like, crinkle, crinkle, crinkle. Oh. Crinkle, crinkle, crinkle. <laughs> oh, that's a beat. Somebody call up Nikki. Hi, I'm Melissa. And I'm Mel. Girl, let me tell you, I only had maybe a little less than half of that drink. When you're drinking, you just got to drink more. <laughs> I have a strongly worded email. Actually, that feels in line, though. That's not that's true. True. No, listen. And every now and again, when somebody get out of line, you just yell, pop the truck. <laughs> I'm the juice to her gin. Did we hit record? Is it working? Is it on? everybody welcome to the gin and juice podcast i am melissa and i am not gonna sing like that but i am mel <laughs> sometimes i sing <laughs> I, I don't sound good the last other night, day oh go ahead wait say what you're about to say because i want to last hear. night mckinley said how come every time you tell me to go to bed you sing it <laughs> and i was like oh do i it's probably, <laughs> see it? it's probably like an internal it joy is. that i have that i didn't realize <laughs> so i'm like mckinley <laughs> it's time to go to bed that is so funny. She is asking you, why do you have so much joy that I'm she going to bed? I am your joy. Go to bed. We sing a lot, actually, in our family in a way that's not, um, we're not singers. Mm -hmm. We just sing <laughs> quite a bit. Fair. Uh, I was listening to our podcast the other day, and uh -huh. on whatever episode it was, I started singing, and I heard myself for the first time. I oh. said, you should not sing. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. Y'all should have been told me. Don't sing. Don't Listen. sing aloud on this podcast. Your husband sings all the time, and he's completely fine with it. Okay, so but this is too. But this is the thing about Kev. Kev can actually find a note and like be on key with you the note. You sound like such a supportive wife right now. I because I actually do believe that Kev can find a note and hold a note. He is very good for like surround sound. The problem is Kev always wants to be Beyonce. Truly, he should just be in the choir. I have yet to hear these notes. That Kev he can do it. <laughs> Now, what you have never heard is me on a note. You always, listen, when we were younger and we would be in the, like, church choir, Melissa would be like, I'm a tenor. And I used to think it was I so, am a like, you're doing so much. I am a tenor. You're literally an alto. Like, girl, no. get over here with the rest of us. No. Melissa would be like, no, I'm a tenor. No, I am absolutely a tenor. I am absolutely a tenor, 100%. I am a tenor. That is 100% true. I feel the most comfortable singing. That's, that's I want to sing. Say that. I want to sing. Uh -huh. Anita Baker, Tony Braxton notes. Yeah, but that's they're not, deep. No, girl, bye. Melissa, has, she's just always said she is. She is not. I am a tenor. And they used to let her little self be over there in Showed the up. tenor section with and the I men. And I would be hit. And I would be like, "What is y'all? Everybody's silly. Everybody I, here. I am a tenor. Silly. I don't understand why you don't understand that. Because you're not. I am absolutely 100% a tenor. Okay, girl. Yes. I'm an alto who can sing tenor. <laughs> Thank you. Say that then. No, an but alto I don't. alto who can sing tenor is different than. No, I because might, the altos low key be trying to be sopranos. No. Yes. Yeah, sometimes the alto notes be high. I'd be like, see, y'all are doing too much. This is why I need to stay over here in my lane. I can be a tenor that can go up to alto. I don't want to be an alto that can go to tenor. You don't want to be. That's what you No, are. exactly. So I identify as a tenor ah, I'm not. who can sometimes I'm sing out alto. I identify. I'm tapping out. Because <laughs> this is going to become problematic. I'm done. Yes, I started speaking to do. I can speak. I can hit. Listen, give me a Tony Braxton song. I bet you I can hit that note. I bet you you cannot. What's you going to be over song? here straining your voice trying to go as deep Wait, Tony Braxton. Wait, what's a what's a Tony Braxton song uh, that I know all the words? Unbreak to? my heart. Okay. Unbreak my. <laughs> Y'all heard that? Y'all heard this silliness that's happening? The here? problem is I actually can't sing, but I feel like if I had a coach, <laughs> if I had a coach who could be like, "No, Melissa, this is what you're doing." I used to watch this white dude on YouTube. He's a vocal coach, and I used to try to understand like my voice and stuff so I could do the things, but I still can't. No, but I'm a tenor. Unbreak Listen, my heart. There is, there is a singer who <laughs> learned how to sing. Who is it? There's a celebrity singer. Really. I almost said something shady. It's not Jennifer Lopez. That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> I feel like she got lessons to learn how to sing. She got lessons from Stevie Mackey. To learn how to sing? I mean, I don't know if they're just... I know singers just take lessons, so I don't know if he taught her how to I sing she or learned. if he's just a vocal coach. Mm. Okay. Well, J-Lo, listen, if you're watching, girl, I love you, so I'm not saying... Have you, you seen sing. her recently when she posted her wedding pictures? Mm -mm, I got coughing in. Mm -mm. Jennifer Lopez looks amazing. To be absolutely, I one of I used to oh, listen man. to Ryan Seacrest in the morning, and he would say that one of his biggest what? most. Why were you 
listening to right because I, I listen to pop radio. I don't know what to tell you. I listen okay, to the girl. hits. I listen to the Billboard hits. OK, that's is what I like. So random. He used to say that <laughs> one of his most asked questions when people would meet him is, is Jennifer Lopez really that pretty? And he said and he was like 100 percent. Absolutely. I believe that. Me, too. She is. That's a fine woman. She I, just looks phenomenal yes. i don't know what i feel like maybe her ancestors somehow helped harriet tubman's people on the Hello. underground railroad and, and so god has it. shown her favor amen because i don't understand why she looks as good as she does yes. and she's at least 50 or pushing 50 How old is Jennifer Lopez? look I at it 54 child uh, she's 54 mm -hmm. she looks good she looks amazing well, yes, money helps too. Oh, don't get it twisted. Absolutely. Money absolutely helps. We're not but saying, she has a beautiful yes. base. She has I a agree. great foundation. The bones were already there. Yes. Okay, we're just, the Wait, foundation's there. I remember there. when Beyonce did that interview with uh, Oprah Winfrey, and Oprah was like, You're beautiful. Oh. Your skin is like glittering, mm -hmm. it's like glistening. And I was like, Oh, is she that? Is she I was that so pretty? excited. I've never let that go because I'm like, if I ever get up close to Beyonce. I'm going to be looking at her I'm skin. I'm going to be looking at her skin and then I'm going to snatch a single piece of her weave. Then you have to like DNA test it so you understand what's happening. 100%. I'm but we know who so does quick. her hair. Julius will not catch me. That's yes. not true. I know I know someone who's on the team of the people that 100%. does the team of Beyonce. 100%. I don't think she's actually done Beyonce's at hair. At this point, y'all are less than six degrees of separation between y'all and Beyonce, which makes me less than six degrees yeah, of that's true. separation. So at this point, we're besties. That's no, that's that real. That's actually 100% And we're going to see her real. on her birthday. Okay, yeah. So we're going to start this podcast with long story short. We want to thank our sponsors. Hey, man. Um, for sponsoring today's episode. You'll hear more about Factor. them. Factor later on in the episode um okay so we're gonna start with long story short i don't have a lot of long story short um so you can start and i can just talk about my weekend after okay i was gonna say i do want to hear about chicago yeah shot town um i am here to say that makaya has started school yay and i am very very excited so um, Angel recommended the school. Amar goes too, so I was really excited. And I was nervous. We were nervous. Me and Greg, did he go with me the first? I think he went with me the first day. Um, and I was nervous because Makai is a toss-up. Y'all know this about her. She's a little toss-up. But she loves playing. She loves being outside. Yeah. And she loves other kids. Yeah. She just hates me, apparently. <laughs> so... We, I go there, and she's all in. There's a little playground, and she's just up the slide, down the slide, up the slide, down the slide. And every other child in there, there's probably 10 kids at this point, mm -hmm. all screaming. Oh, Their heads off, like screaming. And I am like, she well, she don't care about me. All the parents are still there trying to like soothe, soothe their them. kids. Yeah. The other teachers are there trying to soothe yeah. the kids. And Makai is just like, I don't know what's wrong with y'all having a great day ah, bye my see you later so i'm like trying to like inch out and she's not caring so i just walk out of the room because well they're outside but i just walk out and then i peek through the door to see like maybe she's gonna like turn around yeah and, like, see, never turns around never cares has a great day that's fantastic when how I, long has she been going so she only goes monday wednesday friday she's doing part-time um so this is today is her third day but when i came back to pick her up the teachers were like do you want to make her full time? Because we love her. Aww. She can come every single day. Aww. And I was like, this is this is a ruse. <laughs> is it ruse? ruse? Yes. Because this why is, she? Why is she? She's because so she's, fake. No, Makai actually is very sweet, though. I was so mad. Get at this school and show your ass <laughs> like you do at home. She's there having a great, and then she knows how to act in public. They have an app, so they send you pictures. That's the best throughout the day. And she's just she's painting, she's uh, doing all the things. She's taking naps happily. When I tell her to go to bed, y'all see what she does. When I tell her to go to bed, they tell her to take a nap. She's just laying on a little cot, having a great time, having a good day. Did you say it's nap time? Fantastic! Oh Can I have my blankie? I'm like, oh, this girl. So anyway, it's great, though, because I forgot what it's like to, like, have mm -hmm. days to myself, daytime. Yes. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm going to work out. I'm going to be productive. I'm going to do work and videos and all the things. So anyway, she's been back at school, and it's been amazing. Greg took her this morning. He said that she, she just plays me, apparently, because I drop her off, and she doesn't look back. 
Greg said she grabbed his hand and wouldn't let it go. She was still having fun, but she was like, but also don't stay. leave me. Yeah. So anyway, he ended up like sneaking out, but whatever. They already sent pictures and she's having a great day. Oh, please make sure this goes into the exhibit oh, of evidence. Oh, whatever. For I'm gonna stop talking um, about my kids on Makaya. this podcast. <laughs> Makai Goolsby, we need to ensure that her PR team and her lawyer. Wait till she pulls the router out at the daycare. Yes, graceful ways. No, we need to. She's got to pull the router out. Say her name, people. Say her name. Shut up. You're annoying. (laughs) We need to ensure that, yes, the people versus Makaya. Whatever. I mean, the people versus Makaya. I said that wrong. Makaya versus, versus the people. Yes. Yeah, or versus me. Versus well, I'm you. not a lawyer, but I could take her. No, you're because <laughs> we have so much evidence right now. You would be like at this point, it might be slander. Because I feel like this isn't even she's opinion literally based. My kid. I got hot. She's literally my kid. It's not slander if she's my kid. That means I know who she is, what she does. No, no, no. Because you're stating, like, at this point, it's kind of malicious. Like, I think she might have a case. I feel like you know the truth. and I've been following all the lawyer stuff, so I understand it now. Did you see? I posted a video of Makaya stepping on leaves. Yes. And a bunch of people text me or message me, like, why'd she go back for that third, you know, that last? She, like, stepped on it, stepped on it, walked away, and and then came came back back to do it again. And I was like, terroristic behavior. (laughs) Anybody who comes back to make sure you're dead, to make sure you're down, Listen, to make sure you're not. She just wanted up, to hear it again. Uh, to that's me, that's called the, terroristic behavior. No, that is called that's uh, a developmental milestone. She stepped on it and then said, "Wait, is this making a crinkly sound? Let me make sure." I can't stand that. You. I go back to ensure that that's what I heard. This is a developmental milestone. She should be applauded that she is it's called delusion. <laughs> that she delusion. is at this point. Of recognizing sounds. She may be a producer. I listen to, listen, I, yeah, oh, listen, I'm going hard for my niece. I listened to Timbaland. Oh. And he was talking about, he produced, I don't know. Okay. I just get surf stuff. Okay. Uh, He was talking about, uh, he produced uh, the song by Genuine. Pony. Pony. That's exactly it. You know that sound in the beginning? Uh So he said it was an animal sound. And all he did was truncate it, and that became like the signature thing of that song. People don't call him a genius the way that they should. They assigned that to Kanye really quickly, and I feel like Tim was the first genius. Yes, he got that baby crying in that Aaliyah thing. Brilliant. He is. All I'm saying is, it sounds like Makai is on that same track because Uh, when she stepped on, (laughs) you don't know what was happening in her mind. (laughs) That she was probably like, crinkle, crinkle, crinkle. Oh, crinkle. Oh, that's a beat. Somebody call up Nikki. I'm not a genius. Call up Cardi. I'm not I'm not a genius in the same way that she is, so I don't hear it the way she does. So my feeble mind heard Crinkle. She heard Crinkle, Crinkle, Crinkle. She heard she heard, <laughs> she heard something different. That's all I'm saying. The new Pharrell <laughs> out here. Call up B. She got your new track. Listen, listen. Don't nobody go hard for a bad child than they aunties, okay? That's the truth. <laughs> That is the truth. Amen. <laughs> okay, keep going. That's all, girl. That's it? <laughs> That's all. Oh, well, my long story short, yes, the Crinkle Bob. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate y'all's support because the only the only people the that Crinkle go Bob hard on- The Crinkle Bob is so annoying. The only, that's going to be on the next uh, Kids Bop album. <laughs> Why are you playing? The only people that go harder for bad kids than their auntie is their internet aunties because <laughs> they definitely don't know them. 100 percent i be on um amber amber burrs i am amber burr she's married to the white dude ben anyway i'm all she always talking about her daughter wild and i'll be every chance i get she innocent hello i don't know what happened but i just feel like you framed her so she innocent uh, one of the things that's happening right now is fall is just around it the sure corner is. and you might be looking for wholesome, convenient meals for jam packed days and factor, which is America's number one ready to eat meal kit can help you fuel up fast with chef prepared dietitian approved ready to eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well and stay on track with your healthy lifestyle. Let me tell you, I got some factor meals Ooh. and every single day since eating all of the factor meals, Greg has asked me if we have any more factor meals. And I keep telling him, you ate them all. 
I don't. Why do you keep asking me if there's more? If you know that you ate, you them, ate them all. I'm like, man, I'm hungry. You know what you should eat. The, the meals is in there, and I'll be like, sir. But there's not though, because you there's ate them not all. anymore because you ate them. Okay, so let me factor. My household is all in. Send more, and yours <laughs> should be too. So if you're too busy with your end of summer goals to cook, but want to make sure you're eating well with Factor, you can skip the extra trip to the grocery store and the chopping, prepping, and cleaning up too, while still getting the flavor and nutritional quality <coughs> that you need. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. So all you have to do is heat and enjoy, then get back to crushing your goals. I think which is that, like that's his favorite part, that you can just put it in the, you can just heat it up less than two minutes and he's mm-hmm, eating. Mm-hmm. And that's all he cares about. I'm I'm like, sir, there's so many other amazing things. And he's like, no, 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 listen. I can eat so quick when I eat these meals. <laughs> it's so quick. They're already ready. It's the, it's amazing. So level level up with gourmet plus options prepared to perfection by chefs and ready to eat in record time. Treat yourself to upscale meals with premium ingredients like broccolini. I love broccolini. Leeks, truffle butter, and asparagus, which we love. So head to factormeals.com slash GJ50. GJ50. And use code GJ50. GJ50. To get 50% off, that's code GJ50 at factormeals.com slash GJ50 to get your 50% off. Very good. Very good. Uh, So my long story short, I went to the guy's uh, tour in Chicago, the Ball Brothers tour in Chicago. Chicago pulled up. The energy was amazing. Um, it's just cool, man. It you're got yeah. You guys are going to Europe with us. I'm very yeah, excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although, okay, one thing at a time, Melissa. <laughs> so Chicago was amazing. I had a really good time. We saw Lovey. Nice. Um, we met Lovey's husband. I actually oh, cool. um uh uh voice noted her today because I didn't realize it was her husband until oh, today. That's I was like sitting in the moment doing my reel or whatever, and then it occurred to me like. Oh, that was her, her husband. That's my man. Yes, and I missed when she did the introduction. Oh. So I just told her, like, girl, I would have been the most obnoxious person <laughs> had, had I, I realized, realized that it, that was your yeah. husband. You know, I'm nice, obviously, to everyone, but yeah. I just didn't. Re- I would have been like over the top, like, oh my god, I get to meet you. Yeah. Um. So I was like, the next time, tell him I owe him an obnoxious like hello. <laughs> um. A Spice pulled up. His wife nice. AC pulled up. Yeah. Of course, uh, Sh- or Sharice pulled up uh-huh. with her friends. So it was just a really great time. But I need to tell you guys this. So yes. On the way to this is a long story short but also i'm gonna just transition into pop the trunk because i actually want to pop the trunk on airlines amen the entire industry okay the reason why is because they play in our face you get a menu that says these are your options while you're on this flight for food why is that not the case because when you and coach, they don't give you no menu to oh, ask hello? you what you want. Okay, the, well, actually, it's plane, worse. It's, it's when you in first class, but the, the regulars, we be in the back. We just, we be like, you got cookies? <laughs> I'd you rather. Got, you got sun chips? I'd rather have y'all cookies. Sun chips and Sprite. But tell us your, your bougie first class story. No. Because I'm, I'm interested. Because next time, <laughs> I'm going to tell them I want a refund and put me in coach. <laughs> That's what I'm going to tell them next time. Because they play in your face. You think, this is the problem. You pay first class, you think you're somebody special. <laughs> And then they go and they play in your face, okay? <laughs> so in the first class, they give you a menu. Kay. They say, these are your options for breakfast. <laughs> so you're, yes. Yes. I would like the frittata, please. So I order the frittata. Okay. It comes, you guys, there is cheese whiz oh. on top of my frittata. Oh. I wanted to throw the plate in the man's face. Cheese whiz? Cheese whiz. Ooh. You pay all this extra money to sit in the first class and don't be, I was the second seat, thank God. Don't pay first class money and be the first seat. Oh. You don't even get the privilege. You're up against the wall. You can't lean your seat back and you put, can't put your stuff underneath the seat. It oh, has to go on the overhead bed. I hate bed. that. I hate and that. it's the worst. Your seat don't hardly bend back. I told Kev the next time if I, because Kev is all for first class, which is fine. That's Put us in there. I don't care. But if I'm in the first seat, put me in comfort. Uh, Put me in comfort. It's better. It's better. Yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. complete waste of time, money, experience. I don't that want doors. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then to get in the seat and you give me a plate of frittata 
with cheese whiz. That's disgusting. Melanie, I was so mad. If cheese whiz would have pissed me off. I said, and, and it wasn't even a frittata. It was just like a layered plate. So it was spinach on the bottom, Ugh. egg thing on the top of that, and cheese whiz on the top of that. Girl, cheese whiz. I said, Kevin. I'm so mad. I said, when I when I didn't have money, I could have created something better Amen. than this. Back at home when my mom and my dad didn't have money and we had to, today is potluck. Find a pot. I hope you get lucky. Hello. I would have created something more creative Amen. and better tasted than that. Than this egg, spinach, cheese yeah. whiz concoction that y'all gave me that I actually paid for. You bring up separately. No, it's included in your first class ticket because my flight was at six o'clock in the morning. You got to join the bougie, Cam. It's it was. Included. No, legit. At Can this I have point, the money? I really should complain. I will. I really should like tell the people this other thing. When you have the dinner menu, everything on the dinner menu sucks as well. It's really, it's truly a waste of money. The only thing I ever get is the meatballs. Oh, the meatballs are good, except they give me heartburn because they're in a the red um, sauce. Um, well, so then I end up having heartburn salad. for a day and a half. I never eat the salad. I only eat the croutons. Oh, I eat the salad too. <laughs> and I'm always afraid I'm gonna get drunk on the plane because they always do you wanna do you want a free flight a pre flight beverage? Yes. Because I need to defend my food today. Cause everything tastes better when you're drunk. Uh girl, no, I don't want that. Give me this water. You get out of my drink, face. And then everything will taste good. No, I feel like I'm gonna get motion sickness. Being I can't imagine being drunk or tipsy in the air. I feel like I'm have gonna get Have you be never been sick. drunk on a plane? No. You have? Yes. What I feel of... like I would be throwing up. What? I feel like I would be throw. You know, I get motion Why sickness are you quick. Not getting drunk on planes. I feel like I would on throw flight? up. Headed mm -mm. to vacation. The whole point is to be drunk before you get there. No, I'm a throw what up. That life is are miserable. You living? When have you been drunk on an airplane? Every single time I go on vacation, except this last one with y'all, and I should have been. <laughs> Wait, when's the last time? Well, I lost my job that one time, but before that, when I was going on vacations regularly, me and Greg get drunk on the plane. Oh, I can't. I'm scared I'm going to throw up. Oh I'm going to get gosh. sick. No, it's Y'all eat Y'all drink the free drinks on the plane? Wait, free? They always cost money. We're not in first class. Oh, Y'all may as well upgrade if you're going to get drunk. At least then it's included. We have to pay for ours. We're in the back of the yeah, plane. Y'all may as well upgrade if you're going to drink all that. Z. If you're going to get drunk on an airplane... You need to, you need to. No, it's the best. So that when you get there, you're already ready to turn up. That means you have to register, check in, and ride to the air, to it's the uh, resort or wherever, you're the hotel. Just wiggling because you got to pee. You're filling out your stuff all messy. Oh, it's all up. Here's, my, here's my card that I'm a I U.S. Can't. citizen. Sorry if you can't read it. Let me in. I cannot. I'm ready to be drunk. I cannot. I don't know what's happening. I feel like maybe because I started drinking. You know, I get car sick so easy. You do. I get car sick so easy. You, you guys do. don't understand that my life is very complicated. I get car sick so easy. The thought is making me dizzy. The thought of being drunk. Okay, listen, because somebody just said you got to pop them an edible on the plane. I have a question. You see, Cam is already knowing. When we go to Europe, are you going to take an edible before we go? No. You're going to go to sleep. It's great. How long is the flight? 10, 12 hours? Melanie, the thought. You what are so you going to do for that long? I sleep. I, I'm sick thinking about it. Oh, my gosh. I am sick thinking about it. I had an it. edible before I went to Singapore. I woke up and we were there. It was great. I don't remember anything about that flight. But I you, remember but, being amazing. Are you serious? Amazing. But you don't feel like you're like, what if you're Kevin, out of your mind? I'm getting some edibles for y'all. But what if, <laughs> first of all, that's the fastest way to go to jail. Bring weed on an international oh my God, flight. It's such a rush. We're going to make the news, all right? It's going to be for a different experience. You're like, oh my God, is that the dog? Is it going to get me? <laughs> Is that a dog? Is it gonna get me? It's sending me. I would cry. You have a story? Oh, fantastic. I Kim, no, would lose it. <laughs> no, me, hi. You would be excited. I would be like, we're gonna go to jail. <laughs> Can he smell it on my breath? Oh my God. We're gonna go to jail. Mr. Officer, I didn't mean it. I thought it was a gummy bear. And then they told me afterward it had weed in it. Can you smell it? Am I gonna go to jail? Oh no. We're doing this.
gin and juice takes Europe. We're coming back with the story. I'm gonna get. You know, Melissa loves gummy bears. I do love gummy bears. I'm gonna buy her uh, some. Oh my god, I would be. We're going to jail because I'm gonna tell. On the way, on the way to the every. Oh. If you snitch on me, no, I'm snitching because I'm gonna be nervous. I'm they're, gonna be. They're gonna, so mad. They're going to literally be like, "It's her." I go, you, go to her. If you snitch on me, <laughs> sweating, Botox under my arms, gone. It's gonna be tequila and gin. <laughs> because oh. no more juice. This sounds like a horrible experience. Tequila and weed. I would die. <laughs> I will die. It's so dramatic. No, I will die. I will die because I can't do tequila already. Then you add weed. I'm going to be outside of my mind. You're gonna be sleep. I don't understand why you think you're asleep. When people are high, they don't be like We can get the there first of all, it's legal in California. And you can go get specific strains. So we will get you a strain that makes you sleepy. Not that's going to make you have Why a can't time. I just have melatonin? That doesn't put you to sleep. That puts you to sleep. See? But that's legal. True. And so is weed. Not in Europe. No, because no, no, no. It's fine. You no, don't have to fly no. back on it. Let me tell you why. Because the day that we do it, they're going to start a breathalyzer test. At the a airport. breathalyzer yeah, they're going to give us weave? of weed. So they're going to give us a breathalyzer test, and then they're going to be like, "Are you high? You can't get on this plane." That wasn't the rules. Yes, it is the rule today, right now, at this moment. Well, and so you're going not to jail. How that works, but it's fine. You're I'm going to jail give right you now. Some gummy bears. It's going to be fine. They're going to be the kind that makes you sleepy. You're going to get on the plane and be like, "Oh my gosh, that was the best sleep ever." And I'm going to be like, "Wasn't it?" No, I'm definitely going to act high. You guys don't understand. I'm going to act high. Oh no. The thing about it is I don't know how to act, so I'm going to be I'm going to be like I'm going to be You're like You're going to be sleep, Melissa. I want you to understand. Are the, we high? They have Do you feel that high? makes you Cuz I feel high. Is everybody high? Do y'all hate her as much as I hate her? Cuz I hate her. <laughs> is everybody high? Is everybody high? We are high. We are high. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> what What's the next part of this podcast? Why do we do this show? What's happening here? <laughs> They're going to be like, girl. <laughs> that's what you're going to say. Ain't no way in the world she's this high. She Let her through. literally not high. <laughs> she's obviously fine. <laughs> she's obviously fine. There's no way you're high, girl. There's girl. no way. I'm going to be like, no, I am high. Can no. you see it in my eyes? I can't. <laughs> Can you see it in my eyes? Look at my eyes very close. <laughs> well, I'll report back on this one. <laughs> it's just going to be me, Greg, and Kev. Hi. <laughs> Melissa's going to be wide awake. The rest you of can, us are You can be give great. me, what's the pills that they give you when it's, um, when you're doing like a thing and they give you the real pills, but then they have the fake ones? Placebo? You could give me a placebo. That's exactly. A placebo high. And yes. A placebo and edible. You're going to be. And I'm going to be the highest. Absolutely. Of all the people that are high. Because you're annoying. <laughs> That's a great mukbang idea. <coughs> we all take edibles. Mukbang. Oh, that's hysterical. All, all right. right, next. <laughs> what? what are we doing? Oh, I did my pop the trunk. Oh, okay. Well, then let's go to black Twitter trends. Okay, great. I don't have any. Oh, I did want to ask that. What is your travel candy of choice? Um, I don't have one. Really? What do you normally, what's your snack when you travel? I don't have one. Because you drink weed. <laughs> because I drink weed. <laughs> that's exactly what's happening. I'm over here drinking weed. You're drinking the and weed. And that's my that's my snack of that's choice. That's why. So you don't have no snack. No, it it depends on the day. Really? My, I don't have a like consistent a, a, consistent a consistent thing that I need to have or want to have when I travel. Whatever. Yeah, and whatever's in the little mm. shop it. I get gummy bears almost every time I get on a plane. I know. I mean, every single time I am packing a suitcase, I am grabbing a bag of gummy bears consistently. Oh, no. Every time. Lately, I just posted this that I got on the, the Nerf candies. I mean, the oh, Nerd yeah, candies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Them jokers are addictive. I don't know what they put in them. I'm thoroughly actually convinced that it's some type of crack cocaine. 
Uh, they are so addictive, but they give me the worst heartburn. Everything gives you heartburn, and you just continue to take it. Because I still have to live. Without those. <laughs> no, because I'm addicted. Oh, okay. That's why. <laughs> Uh, everything does give me heartburn at this point in my life every most things give me heartburn it's it's on rare occasion that i have a day that i don't have heartburn i get heartburn when i don't eat i'm not heartburn when you eat you get heartburn when you don't eat no melissa doesn't take anything no i don't take anything i don't take medicine that much no i went to the doctor today though advil or leave for migraines she doesn't take ibuprofen for pain she Mm -mm. takes and actually i typically don't but lately in these years of my life when i'm in pain i'm like wait you mean to tell me there's something that exists that can make me not be in pain and i have such bad migraines at this point Mm. i got migraine a leave and it's been incredible i'd be like yeah because like the lights oh yeah that's a real migraine my head like i it feels like i can't do anything and then i discovered these uh headache pills and they've changed my life Actually, if you're having migraines like that, that's a real migraine. When you're sensitive to light, oh that's a real migraine. You worst. probably should uh, take medicine for that. Yeah. I don't have nothing that I'm that in pain, though. What? Like, I don't feel like I have anything that's so in pain that I can't take it. That's I be, the problem. Yeah. I have yeah. a high pain tolerance. I, yeah. I do and have a pain. That, I agree with that. But that's the problem of, like, it's not so bad. Meanwhile, you're, like, suffering, and you're, like, but I can take it yeah, instead yeah, yeah. of being, like, for sure. I should just take something that can help me get through this. No, no, no. We, we persevere. Amen. Well, that's your business. All right, next. Um, I just want to call out that Kiki Palmer apparently is back with her baby daddy. I saw that. And I started to say, let me tell you why I'm mad. Because last week, I started to say, after saying, like, wherever he pitched the tent, we going to have the circus. Yeah. I believe in showing out. I believe in showing your ass. I also believe in, I love when people go back to their old crazy man. I thought that was so I'd interesting. I'd be like, I'm not in your business, and this is why you should stay out of grown folks' business. No, 100%. I want to talk trash and then watch you go back and be like, well, my bad. I should have shut up. <laughs> that's my favorite. Let me shut up because that's your man. They called and you it should the... Do, and I don't know the ins and outs of your relationship. I don't know what happened. I don't know if he apologized. What... I don't know. I don't know what happened before, during, or after that incident. I only know what y'all put on the internet. I appreciate y'all for letting me kiki. And now... He gonna kick key. That's what I think. Morgan said, I don't think they ever broke up. I'm starting to think it was all a publicity stunt. And I stunt. love that. I love I, that. If it was a publicity, I literally, bravo. Like, truly standing ovation. Yes. Bravo. We were all bought in. You got out of it the video. Congratulations. 100%. You duped the entire internet. It could have been. I love that so much for you. If As long as he's not like crazy, crazy. Right, but if he just like pissed you off, and then you told everybody, and we got mad, and we're like, rah rah, we hate him, and then you're like, I just cannot love him. That's your business. I hate it. I have a hate love relationship for it, unless it was a publicity stunt. Because to be honest, at the end of the video with Usher, I thought, you know how it started kind of low. Yeah. I thought when they pulled out, he was going to be next yeah, to her, yeah, yeah. and then I was that I was going to be all in. Okay, <laughs> I was like completely like, yes, you all guys in. did the things. But then he wasn't. And so yeah. then when they ended up being together, I was like, I'm confusioned by this. Yeah, but then she re- she posted them birthday photos and his birthday is tattooed like underneath her ass. And I was like, oh, that's her man. That's her man, man. Why would she tattoo his birthday? I don't know, but it's underneath her cheek. That's your man. You're not just out here. Ta- well, I hope you're not. If you are, you should not. How long have they been together? I- it is such a thing to like tattoo something on you. So. 100%. And to tattoo, she love him. His birthday. I mean, at least it's not on like her arm or her shoulder, but her his birthday. That's her business. That's why I love it. Go and then what's the significance of the booty? What you said it's on the booty? It's underneath her booty cheek. But what you mean? What's the significance? It's her butt cheek. That's that he gonna weird. be looking at. I'm sure. That's strange. That is. Congratulations to you, Kiki. Them. Kiki, I love it. You like it, I love it. That's exactly how I feel. Thanks for letting us kiki about the relationship. Ciao. And now go live your happy life. Amen. As long as he makes you happy, that's your business. Yeah, yeah you're right about that. I if, love it. If that makes you happy, Kiki Palmer, I'm happy for you, girl. <laughs> Just go, y'all be happy. And together. the next time he act a fool, do it again. 
put it on the internet. Let us be mad. But how many times before we like, girl, y'all deserve each other. We are out of it. I heard them call the people the um, the internet laws, the internet in laws oh, or something like, like that. The, yeah, yeah. Great. I was like, that's so funny. <laughs> I love that. <clears throat> I'm all for. I'm all for it. My voice is. Mine is gone too. I really think I have long COVID symptoms. That's unfortunate. I told the doctor today when I went to go visit. What did they say? She just kind of looked at me like, "Well, it Welcome. could be." You're probably not the first person she's yeah, seen. Yeah, you it. seem you seem fine. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, I saw this that we can. <clears throat> Y'all hear my voice? Yeah, it's gone. You need tea. I had some this morning. With honey. And lemon? Yes, Greg made it. Um, I saw something that on Twitter that said, what helped you grow? Like, what's a thing that helped you grow the most in your life? And I was curious if you had an answer. Moving from Washington State. Really? Absolutely, 100%. In what ways? I feel like it was the first time I had to do, like, literally everything on my own. Mm. In Washington, there's a baseline or was a baseline because we moved there with our parents. Uh-huh. Once you once we moved here, we didn't have friends. We didn't have a place to stay. We didn't have a church home. We didn't have direction. We didn't have a job. We didn't have anything. Everything was like starting from scratch. Yeah. And I feel like it allowed both professionally and on a personal level, the most uh, growth occurred for me mm. in leaving in leaving Washington. Interesting. It's part of the reason uh, we were talking to the boys last night um, because obviously Isaiah's senior this year, and I was telling them like I want them to move for um, college because I was like you still have the safety net of us. Yep, yep. But you're able to like go out and do the things, and so of course Isaiah's like I'm not trying to move. I'm trying to go up to college up the street. Yeah. And so he was like, but I still want to get my own place. And I was like, well, your mom only has two options. You either move away and we're here as a safety net to help you. Or you stay here and you live in your room. Oh, you're not going to allow him no. to stay in an apartment locally. No. It but is expensive. It is expensive. <clears throat> and also you have to, you have friends and distractions here. Get your butt in that room so I can make sure you go to class. So in order for him to live by himself, he has to find his own way to do that? No, we're still going to be here, but you need to just stay in the room. <laughs> you either you either leave and you could be on your own ah! or you stay in this house. As it's, long as he's in Los Angeles, that's the case? Like what if he moved to like San Diego? Oh, he could do that, but that he's not going you. to. We know the school he want to go to. It's a mile up the street. Literally, well, Kev was child. like, what is wrong with you? I said, I know, but I only, you guys know me. I only have two options, okay? So I'm either shopping at Target or I'm buying something at Neiman Marcus. Hello? There's generally no in between with me. No that's Macy's. just That's just it. I either look like this right. yes. or I'm fully glam. Yeah, there is it. no in between. <laughs> so you either live in my house or please go explore your life. Do, does the college up the street have on campus living yes. though? Yeah. What if he wanted to do that? He does want to. That's not a good okay. No. All right. He did just get a whole new room. He yeah, did, and it's yeah. nice. It's a nice room. I'm sorry. Oh uh, it's God. probably not going to happen. I'm just telling you guys this is a conversation we had last night, <laughs> like literally last night. I was like, I'm so sorry, but you only have two options. You're either staying here or you're leaving. Well, ciao. Out of state. You're going to an HBCU. Remember uh, this, because when Joe leaves, you're going to be sad. No, I'm moving to uh, Greensboro. See, and so now he, then he's, you're going to force him to be local. He's trying to not be local. He's trying to move away, and now you're going to no, no, make no. him be up the street from you. No, no, no. You're Tab's unfair. friend already has a house over there by the college. I've already talked to her about it. You're it's annoyed. Already, it's already set up. Hilarious. Yeah. Uh, well, mine was, I feel like... Um, the thing that has helped me grow, the, because I went off to college, so I feel like I got that early, mm -hmm. and it was like a slow entry to mm -hmm. adulthood mm -hmm. versus, like, you guys did it as adults, and it was, like, abrupt. Uh, but I still had, like, the safety net of, like, this is school. And then I lived in Atlanta still, so all my school people were yeah. still kind of there. And so I had this, like, really slow entry. And then even moving to California, y'all were here. So it was, like, a lot, but it wasn't crazy. Mm -hmm. I feel like... Getting laid off has been the thing that has really? like forced me to like put on put on big girl panties. I didn't know I had. Mm -hmm. I was in the back sewing them yeah. together and then trying to put one leg in at a time. So this has been a journey. How so? What are you about a year? A little over a year? Uh, since the official one, or since they told me? No, since they told you. Because I feel they, like the moment they tell you is real. Yeah. So they told me in. Um, 
22, May of 22. So a little over a year. A little over <laughs> a year. When was your, well, well, actually, let me ask you, was it real then or was it real once? It the... wasn't real until I got my severance. Okay, got it. Okay, so what day is that? In November? I paid. I uh, paid. Uh, yeah, it was uh, November 1st. Okay, so you're coming up on a year. So how do you yes. feel now, almost a year out? Um, I, for, I have always had such a, um, a, um, understated mm -hmm. view of myself. Okay. And being at larger companies allows you to still be understated mm -hmm. while working for someone bigger. Mm -hmm. So you get to like hide under that while still having some kind of like ego mm -hmm. pride a mm -hmm. little bit. It was like a good mix. Um, and this experience has forced me to um, try out things that have always been things I was interested in, uh, but was always too scared to do because who am I? You right, know what right, I'm right. saying? Mm -hmm. And so, like, this is like, girl, do or die. Yeah. You got to do or die. Yeah. What you going to do? Yeah. And so it's forcing me in a way, uh, professionally, uh, personally, like, all around, uh, it's forcing me to multitask and balance in a way that I've never, I thought I was always a good multitasker and like balancer of things. Girl, no, mm. I don't. I asked Kev a question that I probably shouldn't have asked a while ago, but I feel like he's so good at mm. having a gazillion ideas and things going on for like what he has in his brain. And he's able to like execute. Them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm like, Oh girl. So week one of this month mm -hmm. is dedicated to project a. Yeah. And then week two yes. is project B. Right. And the fact that people are able to like switch gears like that, I just, I'm, I'm being forced to figure it out. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, I just feel the pulling of growth. I feel that. And it is, challenging it also i've been thinking about you know when you first um either start learning how to do makeup or even hair when you first start like you're gonna look silly yeah and you just gotta kind of take it on the chin like mm -hmm. listen while i learn to figure out how to do my eyebrows i'm gonna go out looking real stupid yeah okay and my wig gonna be lifting and it's not gonna be the same shade yeah and that's just a part of like the growing, growing process it's yeah a part of the process and so in this phase there's a lot of like okay listen I'm going to be looking real crazy. The, the wig going to be off and I'm going to think it's down, but it's going to be sliding back yeah. for a little while. But eventually, it's when I learn to let that glue sit and then I put it on there, oh, y'all ain't going to tell me nothing. Yeah. So I'm just in the growing phase, amen. <laughs> the wig is lifting. <laughs> My wig is lifting and sliding. <laughs> but in a little while, yes. that wig going to be set. Y'all. That was gonna, a great analogy. Gonna, no. <laughs> So that anyway. was a great analogy. Yeah. It's, okay. It's I love it. I, I agree that that uh, layoffs they they kind of force you. Did, you didn't feel like yours. Um, I would call that the second one. Oh, okay. After the Washington thing, the the one that had the biggest impact was moving, uh -huh. but absolutely the second impact would be being laid off mm -hmm. because it did force me. Uh, very similar to what you just said. It just forced me into a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah, I would say that. Mm -hmm. But it forced me into things I ain't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I actually feel like what is so interesting is your journey to this point is much shorter than my journey to my point. Mm. I feel like only here recently have I felt a rhythm and groove Got in it. what I'm doing uh -huh. that I feel settled and comfortable in. But I also think it's because um, I, I think... I'd be going back and forth. You'll never be in my head. But I think I finally settled on things don't have to look a certain way. Uh -huh. And I think that allows me freedom. So I'm even just as an example, as recently as saying, like, I ran into these girls and they said this. I would never do that type of content on the yeah, fly yeah, yeah. because it's not like it doesn't look a certain way. And once I've given up on what an influencer is, oh, yeah, yeah, what an yeah. influencer looks like, what their content looks like. I've given, I've been given up on the niche thing a long yeah. time ago, but I've leaned into, I can do all of these things and it still can make sense because it's all of who I am. Yeah, right, right, and right. I've made the brand be my voice. I've made the brand yes. be my personality. Mm -hmm. I've made the brand be me. So I actually, I felt bad recently because I haven't done home decor stuff, but I was like, that's because that's not what my life looks like yeah. right now. My house is actually a mess right now because we've been traveling so much. Mm -hmm. But once we settle down, I go back into that. That can still be authentically me. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that 
is only here recently. Got it. If that makes sense. Got but it. I feel like you've been able to find with um, I'm Not a Lawyer and the um, Underreported Podcast, all of that. I feel like you're able, you were kind of able to like find that pocket much sooner. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, but I also have you guys as a blueprint, so it's easier. That's right? true. Like once a, a path is, is laid, all you got to do is find your route to the beginning of it. And sure. then you're like, oh, this is the way I yeah. go. I yeah, can yeah, go yeah, that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's 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 very much like, oh, yeah, I got here. But it's because yeah, that I makes be, sense. I be grabbing on y'all coattail like which way left listen, here. Great. Listen. Come on. We're going left. <laughs> yes. So that's that's all the all the things that are happening. <clears throat> the the um, last thing I was going to say on that is if you guys haven't watched that most, I watched it back. The underreported, the underreported with you. Good? I really is. It's so good. Yeah, it's hard sometimes when you are live doing stuff. Yes. That's also why I went back and listened to us. Because sometimes, uh-huh. you know, there's another podcast that I listen to with Mel, and I almost hate listen at this point. Yes. I always tell Mel, it's like, I don't understand why people like this podcast. I don't understand it. Like, yeah. I just don't understand. But I still listen every week. Don't ask. And so I was telling Mel. There's a trademark lawsuit <clears throat> going on with it, by the way. I know. I think they're going to win. I'm going to do a, I'm not a lawyer, but on Oh, it. I'm super intrigued. <laughs> I'm super intrigued. Um, the other thing is that, oh, what I was going to say is, um, so I'm always nervous. I'm like, I don't know if people listen to us and they get it or yeah. like, I don't understand it. And so I went back and I was like, oh no, I think we are funny. I think yeah. it's a good time. I, I think I understand it. All of that to say, I went back to listen to the underreported that just dropped between Melanie and I with, that I did with Mel. Yeah. And I was always nervous. I never want to do too much because uh-huh. I want to respect that it's Mel's podcast. Not- you have a story to tell. But I'm also trying really hard to give real reactions. Right, right, right. And ask questions that I think the audience right. would ask uh-huh. or want to know. Or like if I lost the point, <laughs> like let me stop and ask something clarifying. So that way if I'm lost, maybe someone else is right. lost and they we can all catch up at the same time. Yep. And I actually thought it was a good I like it so was too. a great time. I think so too. I rewatched it and I was like, this is your reactions are authentic. They're relatable. I think that it made it the thing, the balance of that, and we don't have to spend a ton of time, but the balance of it, of underreported that I, we talked a lot about and I want to strike is being respectful to the point that you made of these women and their stories while also bringing, um, doing it in a way, a lot of a crime, true crime podcasts are so like, and then she yes. walked in the room. Yes. And that's yes. just not yes. the kind of person that I am. Mm-hmm. And it's not the way I tell stories. Like, I genuinely get caught up in these stories. And then I tell them to you mm-hmm. guys all the time. Yeah. And I wanted the podcast to reflect the way that I tell you guys right. stories truly. Right. Uh, because it, that's who I am. And that's the way I'm going to tell a story. Yeah. So that's what the attempt is, is making it feel like that. But also being respectful and making sure that the facts and the points about these stories are getting out. Mm-hmm. So it is a balance that it's a balancing act that we're trying to strike. Yeah. But I think it was good. So Yeah, I do too. Agreed. I definitely did. Yeah, um, and Unsolved Mysteries is scary. Yes. First of all, the music is scary. Yes. But the other thing is um, sometimes it's heavy, mm-hmm. and that can be a lot as well. Like, there's only so much I personally can listen to be- before I'm like, first of all, I feel like I'm hearing things at night. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and 100%. it's freaking me out. Yeah. And so, but again, when you are caught up in a story, especially if you're listening to a podcast, sometimes I'm like, wait, what did, like, I'll literally say that a lot. What did they say? Uh-huh. And I rewind, rewind it. it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I want to make sure that I'm doing that to right. you. Right. Because right, if right. that's what I was doing, when I was listening or you're like, oh, wait, what happened? Where did you say she was? Yeah. Because I thought this. Mm-hmm. Ah, OK, now I got it. Now keep going. You know. Yeah. So anyway, that was a plug. Y'all should listen to it. It's a great time. Yes, it's on audio you. and audio and on YouTube. Underreported podcast. You've got mail uh, on YouTube is my channel. Yeah. OK. <laughs> mail takes TV. Uh, well, speaking of what we just talked about, I want to tell you before we get into actual TV about a case, uh, a real life case that just the verdict came in today. Oh. And I just want to tell it okay, because tell it's it. been intense and, and it's been worth the, the, the watch and the listen. OK, go. So <clears throat> y'all listen, there's a woman in Georgia. She's in DeKalb County, so not too far from Atlanta. Her name is Kwanisha jo- uh, Johnson. OK. Uh, and her she has I read today that she had four kids in court. They said three. She has children. Mm -hmm. Her youngest, um, the father of her youngest daughter got released from jail back in September of 2022. So just last year. He gets released. He has nowhere to go. She allows him to stay in her house also because he because he has nowhere to go. But also she's like, you can watch the baby like it's fine. You can whatever. Mm -hmm. So he comes to stay there. 
in November, so it's around Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. November 26th, she she works in the daytime, but she also works as a bartender or, okay. or not a bartender. She works at a club at night. November 26th, she hangs out. Her friends call her, invite her out around 11 p.m. She goes out. Her kids are asleep. His name is Diamante. Diamante, he's at home, so she hangs out. Long story short, by the t- her phone dies. Mm-hmm. And by the time she gets in the car to charge it, it's around 9 a.m. the next day because okay. she has been out at, all, oh, all yeah. night. She's been outside. <clears throat> okay. So her, she wakes up. I mean, she plugs her phone in, and it's a bunch of text messages and voicemails from her aunt and from Diamante. Okay. So she is looking at all these messages, and while she does that, her aunts call her, and then they three-way in her baby's dad. Okay. Okay, so all of them are on the phone. And so they're like, we thought something happened to you, no. girl. Where you been? He says on the phone with the aunts, I'm going to beat your ass when you get home. (gasps) Mind you, two weeks prior to this happening, so this is November 26th, on November 13th, Mm -hmm. she had worked late at her job. When she came home, according to her, he body slammed her (gasps) on the floor on her face. What was he in prison for? They never said directly, but I'll give you a little more context. So she hears this message. And so she gets off the phone with him and she calls 911 and she says, my boyfriend is at my house. Two weeks ago, he hit me. I'm headed home and I would like somebody there. I know that's right. When I get there. Yes. They say, okay. They send a woman out to an officer out to her house. Okay. By the time the officer gets there, they call her and they're like, where you at? And she's like, oh, I'm still 15 minutes away. And they're like, well, we have to go somewhere else. Oh, no. When you get closer, oh, no. call us back. Oh, no. So she's like, okay, cool. She gets closer. She calls again. This is her second time. And she's like, yo, I'm closer. They told me to call back and to have somebody come out. They say, okay. She waits, waits, waits. She ends up falling asleep because she's waiting. Oh, for that long? Yes. She wakes back up. Still nothing. So she calls the police a third time. And she's like, listen, I need somebody to come help me to come be at my house. They're like, okay, we'll send somebody. By this time... She also is able to look at cameras. She has cameras in her house. Mm -hmm. And so she uh, ends up triggering her alarm from her phone Uh because she's like, that will trigger dispatch. Oh, I see. Okay, smart, smart, smart. she triggers the alarm. Dispatch calls her, hey, do you need help? And she's like, yes, can you have somebody come? They're like, okay, cool. So she's waiting for somebody Somebody to come come from the security. By this time, her kids are still at the house and she knows he's mad. So she also, while waiting for dispatch, decides to, like, go around the area to see if she can find an officer. Flags somebody down, flags an officer down, tells them what's happening. The officer follows her to her house, mm-hmm. okay? By this time, she's at the house. Officer's there. They're like, yo, you have any weapons? She's like, there's no weapons in the house, but I have a... This is my house. He's staying with me because he got out of jail. This lease is in my name. I've been staying here. This is mine. She says, I have mm-hmm, a mm-hmm. firearm. Mm-hmm. Firearm tells her, I mean, police tell her to put the firearm in her vehicle. Okay. Okay. So she is at the door. She unlocks the door. Diamante comes out. He has a baby in his hand. Cops are there. They start arguing back and forth. Her and Diamante. In front of the cops. In front of the cops. Arguing back and forth. Eventually, I hope y'all are following. Eventually, the police say, y'all are not really listening to us. Y'all are arguing back and forth. There's no weapons in the house. He basically lives here. Y'all can go back in the house. Together. Wait, wait, wait. I thought they would have to legally take someone away. This is clearly escalating as At a domestic. At this point, he hasn't hit her, right? They're arguing. Because the police is here. Do you understand? You're the barrier of entry. He going to hit her as soon as you walk away. And that's her point. So she says, and it's Take on, me with you. She's, it's on audio. I want to pull it up so bad. They have the ring doorbell footage. She says to the to police. To the police? She better sue the crap out of them. She says... Now, what happens exactly if I go in there and he puts his hands on me again? If I shoot him, come on, is is it self-defense? And the police on the ring ring says, you just better be able to articulate that. And she says, well, I can. I'm telling y'all, basically. Her dogs have run out at this point. She gets her oldest daughter. She gets the dog. First of all, they're not even together anymore. Are they established as a couple? She says ex, but at that point she said boyfriend. So they no. were together, to get, together, were, not together. Yeah, it seems situationship. Like. <clears throat> so what happens is that she brings her dogs in because they run down the street. Police have walked off, but they haven't left. Mm-hmm. She goes in her car and she gets the firearm that she put in there. 
and she gets a tire iron <gasps> and she goes back in her house. And less than two minutes later, police hear a gunshot. They're still outside of her house. They hear a gunshot. Diamante comes stumbling out of the house and he says, she hit me with that metal thing and then she shot me. And then she gets arrested. He dies. <gasps> And she got charged with malice murder. Georgia doesn't have first, second, third degree murder. They have malice murder. And then they have uh, manslaughter. And then she gets charged with cruelty to children. <gasps> because she did it in front of but her kids. It was like seven or eight counts. Yeah. So she had trial last week. Her attorney was Eva Pickford's ex-husband, oh, Michael yeah. Sterling, uh -huh. you know, uh -huh. from Real Housewives. He's her attorney. She had two. <clears throat> Wait, it's not Eva Marcel. Wasn't she on uh, the modeling show? Oh, yeah. Is it? Who's Pickford? Is that, Is that the person? same person? I thought her name was Eva Marcel Pickford. I don't know. I thought, I don't know her from Real Housewives. That's why I'm confusion. Yeah. Her name is Eva Marcel Pickford. It was, oh, yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> he's her attorney. She ends up having trial last week. It wraps. Jury finds her not guilty of malice murder, guilty on every other charge, including voluntary manslaughter. Wow. Yep. So the after it jury reads, the judge is like, uh, her uh, Michael Sterling is like, can we have a little time before we do sentencing? And wait, she's, wait, 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 wait. Michael Sterling is lawyer or Michael Sterling is the lawyer? He's her lawyer. Eva Pickford's husband, ex-husband that she's divorcing right now is a lawyer? Yes, he's an attorney. He was an attorney before they got married. Chad, I just know him as her husband. No, he's an attorney. Full Shut on. up. Yes, yes. And okay. he's her attorney. Shut up. So he's like, judge, can we have a little time before we sentence? And can she be let, she's been out on bond. Can she continue to be out on bond before sentencing? And the judge is, it's a black woman. Judge is like, do we need time? Can We could do this today. And the prosecution is like no like uh actually no the prosecution was like don't let her out we want her to go to jail mm -hmm. like whatever and so the attorney was like um ma'am we are going to do your sentencing on monday morning at 8 a.m you need to be here and so she's like okay cool so they have the sentencing this morning i just want to let hold on i just want to play the beginning of what the judge says Y'all knew that was uh the listen. Y'all know I don't follow these people. Y'all know on. I don't know these people. I just want y'all to listen to the beginning. You're, you're gonna hear my I'm not a lawyer, but because I did a, a TikTok and it's on YouTube. But just listen. I'm not a lawyer, but this is part four of Georgia versus Quanisha Johnson. The sentencing. So this morning, Quanisha was sentenced. But before we get into the actual sentencing, here's a quick clip of what the judge said before giving the sentence. And even though the jury did not hear the novel white tape of the previous domestic violence incident between Mr. Smith and another female, the court can consider uh, that along with the police report and disturbing photographs of abuse to your minor child by the victim in this case. On the day of the incident, Ms. Johnson, I believe that you took all the necessary steps to ensure your safety after Mr. Smith had threatened to inflict bodily harm, harm upon you. And it does not matter that you stayed out all night or even if you stayed out for a week and leaving your children with whomever. That does not constitute that somebody would threaten with serious bodily injury. Uh, Ms. Johnson, you called the alarm company, you called local law enforcement, not once, not twice, but three times. And when law enforcement arrived, they allowed you, the two people in this situation, to go into the home unescorted without any cooling off period, which resulted in the loss of Mr. DeMonte Smith and resulted in your conviction for voluntary manslaughter. So when considering the aggravating and mitigating circumstances of this case, the court is required to impose a sentence that is sufficient, but not greater than necessary. So I don't know if y'all heard that, but basically the jury did not get to see some additional evidence, which was that 
He was a one of his prior girlfriends had a domestic. She called the police on him because he had assaulted her. And she he had also it sounds like she said a minor too. yeah, her minor children, Kwanisha's minor children. Mm. He had uh, there was a police report made because he had done something to those children as well. And so she says, even though the jury didn't get to see those, I did. And I can consider that when I am sentencing you. She then says you did everything she did that you could have done. She should on that day. And the police essentially failed you. I agree. You did what you were you you could have done. Yeah. And so she ends up sentencing her to twenty years, but this is how it's broken up. Five years in confinement in jail, five years in home confinement, mm. and then ten years on probation. Got it. And so the uh and she's under the Georgia First Offenders Act, which is if you complete your sentence without any uh, issues uh, fractions, this will not be on your record. Oh, wow. Greg had that, y'all. One day I'm going to tell y'all that story. Don't tell Gwen when <laughs> Greg want to. But yeah, that's so she and then the his, her attorney says we're going to we're planning to file an appeal. Can she be out on bond until, until we then? file? But what would the be the appeal? appeal? What are you appealing? I'm not sure. I also didn't get to watch the This the seems trial the most lenient of which. Oh, my gosh. You when that judge when I. When she first was like, we can do the sentencing today, I was like, how is she ready? Oh, my yeah, gosh, what does yeah. this mean? And then today she was I was like, ready. Oh, uh, she already knew what she this already was. Knew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We not going to do ready. this. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. anyway. Maybe. Got well, it. And, but usually when I'm able to watch, based on the objections that oh, are you filed, tell you can tell what, the what gonna they're be. going to base the appeal on. I just wasn't able to because it wasn't on the usual network that yeah. I watched stuff on. So it was like trying to figure out like what is the ap- actual appeal going to be based on. But they said they filed, they planned to file one and she let her go home today. Instead wow. of being refined, oh. she let her go home and she was like, you can be out on, on bond. That makes sense. She has some, obviously some restrictions. She can't just like be out. She sure. has, she has to get a job between eight and like four o'clock if she's going to be working. She can only, she can't be around any convicted felons. Got it. Her kids have to be in therapy. So stuff like that. But when I tell somebody sent this case to me and they was like, you need to do it, whatever. And I started researching it and I was like, oh, this is wild. It made me not it's not exactly the same as the NFL mm-hmm, player, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but it was like, is this self-defense or is this yeah. murder? Essentially. Yeah. And it's like in his situation, they came to him. Yeah. and He was you know, he left his home. Right. But in, in right, right, right. killing one of them. But in this situation, she really tried. No, she tried. And she the thing really is, tried. like, I do get he never had an opportunity to hit her on that day. Right. But she also understood once he hits me, she may not have gotten up again. Well, and so what she says is she said that when she when she, that door closed, she went upstairs because her baby was upstairs. And she says he lunged at her. Yeah. And that is what prompted her to. She then said, "I'm defend ready herself. because I, I may not have another opportunity." You may. And at this point, police, history shows. Police, I've tried. I've not only have I tried, but history shows. And history has shows. I made it. Could I could be the one dead today? Yes. yes. Wow, that's crazy. It was quite insane. So anybody, uh, anybody, anyway, uh, I put the entire recap on. Uh, I'm not a, on my TikTok and my YouTube, but I was happy. I was like so anxious about it this morning, waiting to see what the what the Judge verdict was going to be. I mean, not the verdict, the sentence was going to be. So. This bothered my heart the whole time, so I want to make sure I address it because someone said, "But you being white people's business." First of all, don't do me. Okay? Hello. That's first of all, don't do Hello. me. I just got in these white people's business, yes. and I'm only in it because I just watched the show. Yes. And then once the show is over, guess what? I don't be in their business. Hello. I don't be in nobody's business is the actual reality of the situation. So don't don't come for don't, me like mm-mm. that. Y'all not going to do me. And all the real reason I like being in the white people's business because I don't mind talking about them. Amen. And they are a hoot. OK. So, a again, hoot. relax. <laughs> don't do it me. It is a hoot. Uh, one last thing before we go. Um, we both watched the ultimate. Well, I watched all of the ultimatum I, episodes. I didn't. I watched a uh, foe in the start of five. The first one was wild because why that why that girl mushed that man i don't know i don't know she should have never signed up for the show she shouldn't have she should never have if you know your jealousy and anger combined causes you to react like that girl you don't sign up for a show like that that's not the show that's not the show for you she mushed that man she sure did and then two episodes later was like i'm pregnant i want an update me too because is y'all still together? Well, on her Instagram, it seems like they are. And really? She, and she's like, she made a funny like reel of everybody being like, uh, where's the baby? Where's the baby? Because she ain't posted the baby at all. So people are like, where's the baby? And I'm so not going to lie to you. I got, I got questions. 
about I want to see the baby. I do too. I want to see, to your point, that they're still, t- they have a four month old apparently. I want to see, oh. not that. I, it ju- it you should have been on that show, honey. No, she should have never have been don't on the go show. On the I'm show. surprised they don't make them do pregnancy tests before then. But I bet you they will now. I know they should. I bet you they, they will should. now. That's a good idea. Is that legal? I don't know why it wouldn't be. We just want to ensure you don't want to go down a path of doing this and breaking up. Wouldn't you want to know that ahead of time? I agree. It's I for think- your best interest. I agree. I just I'm so curious now if they can like make you take one. I wonder. I don't know. It might be illegal to be honest. Uh, but it was after that it got born. The other couples were boring. I'm, I'm out. I was like, girl, what? One of the girls, the she kept playing the man. I'm a businesswoman. I have a business. It's the stage of life I'm in. And her dude, the she ultimatum. was playing him as if he ain't never worked a day in his life. It just was so. I'm gonna watch because I want to see what happens. But like, boring. I just was not into it. Uh, okay. And then last thing, Real Housewives of Atlanta. Waited until the very last episode of the entire season to have an episode worth a damn. <laughs> the whole season has been so boring. And then last night, it got it got. Good. What? Tell me quick because I have to use the bathroom. I've okay. been drinking this fake water. So last night, Drew, yeah. they end up filing for divorce. Yep. So that comes out. Finally. And then her husband, before that even happened, though, her husband is such an asshole. Mm. He he had she was working on Candy's movie, yep. so she's coming in. That just late. came out. I saw it, or I, I saw watch it. I saw the trailer. Yeah. So she he starts sleeping in one of the guest rooms because he's like, "You're coming home late, and like you disturb me when I'm asleep." Oh. So she st- he starts sleeping in the other room. She's like, "Okay, the movie wrapped. You ain't came back in the bed." So they go to to couples therapy, and he's like. This is a a good step for me. This is positive. Like I'm doing, she, she gets what she wants. I get what I want. I feel liberated. No, absolutely I feel not. Free. No. I get to be Mm-mm. in my own bed. And it's like Mm-mm. you don't like her. Yeah, no, that's you don't not a good want thing. it. And then she starts saying how she let some stuff slide that she shouldn't have because everybody remembers Tampa when he went gone for days and was like, I was in Tampa. Mm-hmm. You won't have a home to come back to. <laughs> so. He does that. So anyway, they go to therapy. And, and then the other thing was his cousin, Courtney, that randomly showed up this season, called her a bitch in another oh. episode. And so she's like, how do you feel about your cousin call, calling me that? And he's like, people call you bees all the time. Like, And so she starts crying, essentially, because she's like, you're my husband. How come you don't yeah. care? And he's like, so she's she says... Whoever I hate, basically, you should hate. And he's like, I don't hate nobody for no good reason. Like, it's got to be for a good reason. And she's like, she called me a B. And he's like, mm, that's not Listen, a good reason. We talked about this on a, uh, I can't remember the name of the couples therapy. I I want my husband to not like who I like. Amen. I want you to not Amen. like who I, and, and I want to be enough of a reason for that. Amen. I, I, I do feel that way. I do, I do. You I ain't going to call me do. or my husband a B. And either one of us still like you. That's just we we both hate you together. Yeah, this I is agree. collective hate. I one hundred percent agree. I on don't that. ride like that. Mm-mm. Not never. No. Or at the very least, not you confronting. Girl. Girl. Having a can I have a word? Girl. It was it's a mess. I can't wait for this reunion. But Ralph is an ass and has been for a long time. And I'm happy that they are getting divorced because Drew has her own issues. I think she a liar. I think she kissed that girl, and I don't know why she keeps telling Candy she didn't kiss that girl. Girl, you know you kissed that girl, and that's okay. That's your business. I don't understand why she lied. But Ralph is more evil than her, and mm. that is and that is my problem. She also says that he's the one that said she's dating Ty, that um, ex. I don't know if she's still in the NBA, but that NBA player who's a woman. Wait, so the, wait, so he's alleging that she is gay? There, was, there yes. Oh, but remember in that movie. She was a lesbian in Todd oh, and Candy's movie, too. got it. So I don't know if that... She's like... He's the one who spread it that. Like, I haven't done that. Got it. Got it. Why Which, would he... If your husband's doing that, y'all been should have broke up. He's an ass. But anyway. Oof. All right. I have to use the bathroom. Okay. Um... We'll see y'all next. Uh, no, not on Monday, because Monday is a holiday. So we'll be here on Friday. Recording live. At... I think I told him 11. Oh, Okay. Okay, because we said 12. Okay, I think I said 11. All right, y'all. Bye.